We are going to be analysing and discussing the Odessa step sequence within Sergei Eisenstein's Battleship Potemkin from 1925, whilst also introducing the filming techniques and historical context within Soviet montaging and how that influenced other films later on, which we do by following Eisenstein's montage techniques and why he was the father of montage and how his ideologies is in significant effect nowadays in blockbuster films. Soviet montaging, after the Russian Revolution, filmmakers were a lot more tolerant. Considering Lenin was an idealist, filmmakers also believe in these ideals. This led to the Moscow Film School, which was the first film school ever in the world to be made at the time, but it was mainly used for propaganda films. Propaganda films helped gain support during the Russian Civil War, and afterwards of course, but during the Russian Civil War, they gained an avid audience to join the Red Army. Soviets did this as they followed the hypodermic needle theory effect, where messages from the media are injected into the brains of passive audiences. This theory was used plenty of times, giving the Russian people hegemonic ideas from the government through the media, especially in propaganda films, where they give out a consensus of beliefs of why the White Army was bad during the Civil War. As filmmakers would go to impoverished locations and show kids starving and gain following of more people to join the cause and support the Red Army during that zeitgeist period. But as the time went on, they exaggerated upon it with the Stalinist movement, etc, etc. But in terms of montaging, which meant imagery juxtaposition whilst assembling pieces of film, Eisenstein was the father of montaging, and he used his skills alongside the propaganda protocols of the Soviets in this film, and used it perspicaciously well to send the message of how the Cossacks were represented as evil. What Eisenstein did use as well was theses, antitheses, and syntheses to provide a dialectic relationship approach, which implies how... The thesis is the initial shot, the presumptive statement first made in a narrative. The antithesis in montage theory is an opposing force that stands against or in contrast to the thesis. The synthesis is the resolution, the new meaning derived from the comparison and contrast of the thesis and antithesis. This was quoted by the website video maker. And those techniques from the theses, antitheses, and syntheses is used within the montages in the following sequences. The lack of a lead character in Battleship Potemkin also aids to the film's Bolshevik ideology. This was not a decision made accidentally, however, as it represents values that Eisenstein would have wanted to strongly convey throughout the film. The government and the Soviet filmmakers knew the power of film and used this to influence the social and political climate of Russia. The film was released in 1925 and further aids the views of the Bolshevik people against the Cossacks. Part 4. The Odessa Staircase, The Beginning Eisenstein opens the sequence with tranquility as we as the audience are introduced to the location of Odessa's docks, establishing shots of a plethora of civilian boats sail nearby on the Black Sea as they Quote, streamed to the battleship, unquote, from the docks, commencing calmful with steady shots of civilians walking to the docks to witness the Potemkin. A myriad of the civilians are seen as euphoric on land. We then see wide shots of boats streaming to the Potemkin, which we finally see. The sailors on board greet them with utter joy as the boat encompass the dreadnought to wave goodbye as they are en route to battle. The sailors sit on the edge of the boat, interacting with the boats that surround them, and begin bidding farewell with jubilation. The boats nearby throw supplies and food and animals to the dreadnought, which determines the community's kind-heartedness towards the seamen. Eisenstein shows the community, which revolves around innocent, working civilians. The tone of the scene abruptly changes, however. The music changes from a feeling of happiness to a feeling of impending danger, giving the viewer a sense of a shift to a darker notion. This is accompanied by the word suddenly appearing on the screen, followed by a close-up of a woman's face with various frantic facial expressions. 
Ogenstein uses fast cuts to bring further drama to the scene. Fast cutting is a technique within Soviet montage that he heavily integrated throughout Battleship Potemkin to convey complex emotions which would not have had the same impact compared to the use of long takes. The two elements of the cinematography and the editing put together also gives a visual representation of the atmosphere in that moment of time, especially encapsulating the mood of the unsuspecting crowd's reaction. He then uses long shots to re-establish the scene, showing the soldiers appear at the top of the steps, forcefully shunting the crowd below. Ogenstein also intercuts this with medium shots of the crowd running away. As well as this, he also included close-up shots of people's feet on the steps that creates a sense of claustrophobia as well as foreshadowing the horror that is about to occur. The audience's attention is now focused upon a mother and a small child attempting to escape down the stairs shown by the following long shots of them. It cuts to the close-up of the guns firing. This shot is impactful when showing the guns as an abrasive phallic symbol in the hands of the soldiers that prognosticates a cataclysmic outcome for the oncoming continuing shot. The bullets suddenly hit the kid, leading him to fall, cutting to a mid-high angle shot, showing the kid as vulnerable. Dramatic irony is formed, as we as the audience know the kid has fallen, whilst the mother carries on fleeing, assuming the kid is with her, but he is not. A mid-shot of the kid covered in blood, crying out, mouthing the words mama, implies such a conspicuous harrowing sight showing the savagery of the soldiers to a child who depicts innocence in such an upsetting scene. Eisenstein portrays this scene well to gratify sorrow to the audience when manifesting the precarious situation the kid is in. It later cuts with the mother's reaction with an intense close-up of the mother in deep dread, alongside a direct spectator's gaze as she makes eye contact with the audience to depict the horror for us to feel what she is feeling as she contemplates her son being brutally, brutally trudged on. It cuts to the fast shots of feet coming down, alongside medium shots of the people stepping and killing the young boy to death, completely neglected. The kid is shown in a high angle shot surrounded by people fleeing or being shot and killed whilst falling. Eisenstein's technique of his overtonal montage in this scene implies the intensity this scene brings. Eisenstein creates a total sense of shock by showing the woman picking up her dead son and walking back up the steps to show the soldiers the consequences of their actions. In doing so, this also motivates the movement back up the steps. Roger Corman, in an interview, states, it brings a note of humanity to the clearly described inhumanity of the soldiers' movement. The way that the shots are cut together makes the audience sympathise heavily with the crowd of people something Eisenstein was striving for throughout the scene. This is also aided by the fact that they are unarmed, showing that they are helpless compared to the Cossack soldiers. The score intensifies as the woman continues to ascend the steps. The music then goes completely silent, creating suspense. This, accompanied by Eisenstein's effective use of composition, symbolises the woman is being towered above both metaph uh, metaphorically as well as literally by the drawn out shadows of the soldiers. The shot also creates a sense of helplessness as well as mystery into the woman's fate. The suspense lingers as subtle tones of music are re-infused alongside the footage. Eisenstein sharply cuts back and forth from the woman and the crowd behind, crying for mercy. This abruptly stops, however, when the gunshots are seen and the woman falls to her knees. Eisenstein pauses on this impactful imagery before going back to the surrounding carnage. We then cut to the next scene, which shows the bottom of the stairs, the multiple long shots to mid shots, showing how the Cossacks flanked the other side of the staircase and slaughtered the fleeing civilians. Completely surrounded as the audience, we now foreshadow there is no way out of the massacre and feel sympathy for the innocent civilians who are undoubtedly precarious. But the montage starts to calm down, as there is a break from the shootings, as we focus our attention on the mother with a baby carriage, who notices the soldier's approach. She begins to panic and covers her baby by shielding herself so the baby would get no harm. Quite a distressing scene, as the close-up 
designates her fierce sacrifice to protect her baby as the audience witness her downfall as she gets shot in the stomach. She falls slowly with mid shots and extreme close ups of her reaction to show her dying. The instrumental proceeds to calm down, becoming a somber orchestral ballad which gives a par parallel sound fitting extremely well with the scene of the mother dying. Its adagio style of tempo matches the scene as well. Eisenstein does not contain his overtonal montage for this scene, but a tonal montage to spark emotion to the audience, with the music giving a synchronous effect to help do this. On the other hand, as she dies and falls, her baby in the pram gets pushed down the stairs during impact. Color shove effect is in use as we get intense close-ups of civilians who are in emotional, are in the emotional purpose of shock, with their eyes widen in fiend disturbance, as they witness the pram with the crying baby go down the stairs steadily but quickly out of control. Einstein uses a visual induction technique for an intellectual montage, which I'll mention soon, followed by him coming back to the overtonal montage, as usually mid cuts. There would be the shots of the downstairs massacre and the soldiers marching down the stairs shooting. The baby manages to make it down, but the pram is about to tip forward, but the baby gets slashed off screen, of course, by the cavalry soldiers downstairs alongside the civilians who also get slashed by the Cossacks. After this, Eisenstein intercuts shots of the battleship firing its cannons, but to no effect on the soldiers. This reiterates the helplessness of the people against the soldiers, that even their own army is unable to help. At the bottom of the steps there are statues of lions that Eisenstein photographs from various angles. However, it's the way that Eisenstein cuts these photos together that creates the impression to the audience that the lions are rising up in opposition to what is going on around them. This can also symbolise that even though the Cossacks had won this battle, eventually the Bolshevik people would rise up in revolution and win in the end, which is what happened. In terms of influence, Brian De Palma's Untouchables film from 1987, De Palma gives an homage to the Odessa staircase sequence with the baby pram going down the stairs. This intertextual reference is similar but far more hectic compared to Eisenstein. As much as Eisenstein's scenes of the baby and the pram going down the stairs is hyperbolic, we use technique of intellectual montage, overtonal montage and the Kuleshov effect. They are influenced in De Palma's film a lot more but a lot more hyperbolic in the process. It shows how much of an effect Soviet montage has come, as it is now being used in Hollywood films. In De Palma's film, the pram goes down the stairs, but with guns blazing left, right and centre, a bit over the top. But intellectual montage is used well, as the shots are juxtaposed in an intellectual level, as the emotional purposes focuses on Elliot, Kevin Costner, and Catherine, Patricia Clarkson, who are shocked at the baby, Pram going down whilst guns blazing. The visual induction shows the visual perception of their facial ex facial reaction, which cuts to the other adjacent visual of the trolley. The juxtaposition is the Gulashov effect. Moving from the effect, what De Palma uses perspicaciously well to make his film similar to Eisenstein's is by using overtonal montage in that scene, as for metric montage. The guns firing on both ends increases tension in the scene which makes the audience anxiously prognosticate when the montage finalizes raising questions will the baby be fine will he get shot with time schemes of shortened shots which abbreviate the time the audience take to analyze individual quick shots that become tense de palma fits this well to eisenstein's ability of metric shot metric montages in terms of eisenstein's rhythmic montages De Palma perfects this as the montage is used in action scenes, how there is a gunfight scene matching action for the conflict. And finally, for tonal montage, emotional intensity is composed intelligently as the audience are on the edge of their seats, whilst reinforced with emotional contact, with the help of music and lighting, which De Palma does well, putting the audience in shock with our main character's life being in danger, as well as the babies. In conclusion, the Palmer's usage of Eisenstein's filmy ideology is used brilliantly, which is why this scene is overtonal by using Sergei Eisenstein's five montages well for his film. 
Another example of where Eisenstein's work can be seen to have inspired filmmakers after him would be in Francis Ford Coppola's The Godfather in 1972. Coppola pays homage to Eisenstein's style of editing through the use of rhythmic montage by matching the sound of the church organ with the suspense before the people are shot. In doing so, it gives greater emotional meaning to the scene. Not only this, Coppola goes on to further pay homage to the Odessa step sequence specifically. He does this through a shot where the character is shot in the eye shattering his glasses. This shot highly resembles that of the woman in the Odessa step sequence. Coppola even goes as far as using the same side of the actor's face. In conclusion, Eisenstein's Odessa step sequence in Battleship Potemkin is seen as pioneering for its use of Soviet montage theory. Eisenstein's immutable five theories of montage paved the way alongside other Eurocentric filming ideologies towards the grand blockbuster Hollywood feature films, such as the ones that we have covered in terms of influence. The Godfather, The Untouchables, Schindler's List and Apocalypse Now.